welcome back to the C word, and this is episode four, I think. How are we on episode four already? We are already, aren't we? Hello, everybody. How welcome it... back. April. How is it April already? Quarter of the year has gone. Mm. And I've achieved nothing. <laughs> you have. I'm sure you have. I had a couple of comments or questions, no comments really, let's be honest, um, about the C word as the name. Uh, a couple mm. of people asking what it was and somebody else suggesting it was inappropriate. Two people are suggesting oh. it was inappropriate. I think what we thought was it, wor it worked for both of our, our um, both of our names obviously beginning with C. But also, I think, if we're honest, there was the fact that it will, of course, be a talking point. People go, they surely don't mean that. No, we don't mean that. No, we don't. We mean it's our names, honestly. Yes, exactly. I think that was it, really. I think it was just that, yeah, let's uh, have a bit of fun with it, really, you know. Indeed, yes. A bit of fun. A couple of people have felt offended because they thought we meant cancer. It came from, we were talking about what to call it, and we, I said it was a shame that both of our names did not begin with P. If we were Pamela and Penelope or something, we could have been two P's in a podcast. Yes. But, but then, with the, but we can't be because we're not P's. So, when you <laughs> talked about that, do you know it, it immediately rang a bell with me, and I remembered afterwards that there is already a podcast called that because I listen to it occasionally. It's about the Real Housewives. You know, there is a theory that there is absolutely no original thought left in the world, isn't there? That, that every thought you've had somebody else has already had every idea there is literally nothing else nothing out there that somebody hasn't already thought of and that just goes to show that there was me thinking i was innovative and unique and coming up with something nobody ever, i thought it was a genius i was i was on fire that day with my genius velocity and it turns out somebody else got there first as always well, that can't life. be true can it but about there being no original thought because there's new songs come out all the time which i suppose are just notes put but in then are there because nearly all the new songs you go reminds me of so and so 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 even, there are only there are only x number of chords i'm not i'm not musical i don't know how many chords and notes there actually are but there's only x number and whilst in theory there are an unlimited combination that you can use those chords and notes in you are almost always going to be influenced by something you have previously heard so there's quite often plagiarism cases and whatever. I don't know what they call it when it's music. Yeah, it's true. Plagiarism? Yes. Yeah. Um, there's quite often cases of people saying, oh, you know, you stole that riff from me or that's that's the same bit that was in Bohemian Rhapsody or whatever, it, you know. Is it intellectual property rights mm. theft or something? Hmm. So, yeah, anyway. I don't know if there's any original thought left or whether we're all just repeating. Well, it probably won't be now they've got this AI. They're saying AI is going to take over the world and run the world, aren't they? Mine can't even wake me up at the right time, so. <laughs> I think that's user error, to be fair. I sometimes think it must be user error, and sometimes I say to it, blah, 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 and it goes, I don't know, and I'm like, well, you're a great help. Thanks very much. Yes. Thanks, Alexa. You've been brilliant. <laughs> I haven't got an Alexa still. I have, I've got Siri, obviously, but I haven't got an Alexa machine. Even my mother's got a bloody Alexa. I must be the only person in the world without an Alexa. You are behind the times. We've got three of the little dot things in this house. Natalie's is called Alexa. And so when I had one in my bedroom, I then had to call it something else. Otherwise, Natalie's would respond. So mine's called Echo. And then the one downstairs in the kitchen is a Google one. So that one's called OK Google. No matter what room I'm in, I'm always calling the damn things by the wrong name. Always. I'm standing in my bedroom going, OK, Google, why aren't you listening to me? And, and my Echo's sitting in the corner going, because that's not my name. It's not my name. <laughs> I'd be bloody hopeless. I mean, I get, I still call, I call I, I have, oh God, I can't speak. I have one child and I still occasionally call him the wrong name. So three Alexas, I'd be bloody. Yeah, I have two children constantly calling the wrong names. I, I've been reduced in the past to pointing them and going, you, whichever one you are. <laughs> my, um, there's a running joke in our family that my, my, um, gran used to call me Jan Kate Carla because she would go through my auntie and my mum before she got to my name. Yeah, it's so, funny, yeah, isn't Kate it? Carla. <laughs> yeah, I call I call William Nick, which is my brother's name, quite a lot. Yeah. And interestingly, Ashley also calls him Fraser, which is his brother's name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's it. There's no original thought left. Is that's the thing? We're just we're just all running on the old stuff. Clearly not. No. So how's your week been? Because last week you'd had a somewhat trying time. How's well, it been this week? Well. <laughs> It, we, just after I spoke to you last week, we went off to London for a couple of days to see Will, and that was lovely. We had a very nice time, very busy. We caught up with another friend up there who we hadn't seen for ages. And, um, 
you know what it's like when you go away it's just busy isn't it and you don't sleep so well when you're not in your own bed and yada 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 so that was really nice and then we got back and I'm I felt a bit like I'd been run over by a truck I think all the stress of the previous week sort of caught up with me a bit and um I, I did pretty much nothing the last three days of last week and then Thursday last week I had a phone call in the afternoon it was my brother and he said just heard from dad's care home they think dad's had a stroke he's unresponsive oh god yeah <laughs> um, so <laughs> that was a bit stressful obviously they, they were waiting for the paramedics at that stage but he was unresponsive and they couldn't rouse him at all he could just squeeze somebody's hand uh, my my brother obviously went straight there. I started packing, ready to go. Um, and it, long story short, it turned out that he's fine. That he's not got not. He might have had a mini stroke. The paramedics checked him over, by which time he was more responsive, and he might have had a mini stroke. But there's very little point. They said, take him into hospital to check for it because they wouldn't medicate him for it. Or yeah do anything so it would only distress him with his state of mind the way it is anyway so yeah so the upshot of it yeah I mean yes absolutely the upshot of the whole thing is that he's probably had a mini stroke or a TIA and um his mobility his mobility is not great anyway but it's slightly worse than it was and but but you know, that, that was the sort of focus Sorry, so just, again. just for anyone listening to the podcast who doesn't know us, Caroline's dad is um, in a dementia care home. So yes, oh yeah, some, some some people might be going, why are they not bothering to treat him? You know, it's oh right, yes, <laughs> yes, he, he has quite advanced dementia. Um, yeah, so th that was sort of the phone call. We, I think we were all poised, thinking that was the phone call, you know, and it was, uh, and then it turned out to be not not that at all, and so that was all odd. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Other than that, my week's been fine, thank you. How's yours been? How, how's your um? I can see yours actually. Otherwise. You can see my week. <laughs> Before we started recording, I said to Caroline, "I'm awfully glad that poor that podcasts don't have visual, because I, I, you can see my week on my face. I think, <laughs> and, and also in the background, we're trying to sort Natalie's bedroom out. She's having a new bed delivered. Natalie, um, how do you put this nicely? Natalie's a slob." Her bedroom is a, is an absolute. It's 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 a, a hellhole. It's it's awful. It's always awful. She knows it's awful. I've told her it's awful. She she presumably isn't bothered that it's awful. It carries on being awful. Um, but when then you when she needs a new bed, then you have to deal with some of the awfulness. And also we have to have the entire house rewired. So this is another thing that's happened this week. Is that oh. the man has come and said the entire house needs rewiring. And for that to happen, you have to have a lot less stuff, and it has to be accessible they don't have to pull up carpets and floorboards and things like that yeah and, um, that's prompted a change of mind it, well, not change of mind but a, a what, what do you call it when you get galvanized into action uh, that. I, I guess a forcible life laundry yeah. yes well, perhaps yeah. you should apply for that program where stacy solomon comes around and puts all your possessions in a warehouse and you sort through them I don't know if there's a big enough warehouse in Bristol for all my possessions. Once you start, I, I, I do enjoy that program. But you look and they say, and in your house we found forty-two pairs of shoes, and I'm like, okay, I've got one hundred and forty-two just in stock alone, yeah. just in stock, you know. So yeah. <laughs> that you know that is the hard thing when you do eBay. So I'm very lucky; I have space for my eBay stuff. And uh, but for you doing eBay and having your stock at home you did have it in a office for a while didn't you you moved out yeah, and then I, I rented a room for it for a while yeah but that that's not easy as well because when you're working half from home and half from an office that's problematic isn't it it's... yeah when I took on this storage room I thought I was going to work out of it I thought I would have all of the stock there and I would sit there and I would do the listing and all the rest of it and everything and I would go to work I felt like I would go to work in that place for x hours a day yeah what actually happened was the internet signal wasn't strong enough in the building for me to be able to work out of there properly and so I ended up just using it mostly as storage I would pack, pack parcels there but then I'd have to bring them home to the postage or I'd have to do the labels at home and it was it became very complicated so it became somewhere where I just stored things and I did in addition to that it was up three flights of stairs so it became somewhere I hated storing things because trying to take bags and bags of stuff yeah. up three flights of stairs and whatever it, it just yeah it was 
it wasn't and also the, the time thing like if somebody wanted a measurement or something you know you haven't got the stock to hand and you can't go and check it and it, it, yeah. it's not an easy thing is it it's... but yeah going back to the point you, you, so you've got all your ebay stock as well as your own stuff so yeah. when are they rewiring do you know um they're going to come back in three months time and see how we've got on with the accessibility of of problems because obviously the chap looked around and he said yeah we would have trouble with things the way they are and i said yes i understand and in, in all brutal honesty it looks like a hoarder's house in here you know I, and I, I did hasten to say to him you know everything in that room is for my for my job it's not i don't just own all this stuff although yeah. I, suppose, maybe I do own all this stuff but um i mean i've already edited my own life so much i've already decluttered the things that belong to me so much there's, there's just an awful lot of other stuff, you know, and yeah, and it keeps, yeah, just keep. We lived in this house twenty six years, and in twenty six years, you acquire a lot of stuff, and and now oh. we're going to be forced into dealing with it. So, are you going to do another life laundry, or do you feel like you've done as much life laundering as you can do, really? I think I'm going to have to be a little bit more brutal again. And and to be fair, there are probably things in this room that I overlooked last time because in my head. This room was the eBay room, so it didn't really count. And there is probably stuff in here that can that can absolutely be edited out. But first things first, Natalie needed a new bed, so this has prompted and and the the needing of the new bed has prevented other things being done. So yeah. Okay, so when I get my new bed, I'll be able to do so and so, and then I'll be able to move this because she's having an ottoman bed now, a lift up ottoman bed with storage underneath, and so she'll oh, be able right. to move this to here, and then we'll be able to move that to there. And so hopefully this is the. You know, when you're looking at a big bundle of mess and you don't know which string to pull to make it start unravelling, hopefully the new bed is the is the right string to pull, hopefully. Fingers crossed, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so any more yeah. news on your hours change at work? It should take effect from about the 20th of this month, I think. Oh, right. So About the 20th. Although, having said that, I'm on the calendar. I don't know what day, what day of the week the 20th is. But, yeah, a couple more weeks. A couple more weeks as we are. And then I should go on to evenings. And I'm really looking forward to that now. I'm really hoping that that is the solution that I believe it will be. Because at the moment I go, oh, well, I'm working in my job on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. So I can't do any eBay or YouTube that day. And even though I only work for six hours on those days, it's, it, that takes 72 hours out of my week, so to speak. <laughs> still nearly a full working day, though, isn't it? And by the time you've yeah. got up and made food and driven to work and done all the other stuff and you're looking after your mama yeah, you, you know walk dogs and, and buy groceries and all the things that yeah exactly and sent parcels and yeah oh i went to send parcels this morning at the delivery office and it was um closed i missed it by five minutes because of roadworks oh. i went to pick up natalie's um, prescription at the pharmacy and they shut the door in my face and said we're closing for lunch so they never closed for lunch but they were that day and they literally just shut the door in my face. So we're closing for lunch. And I was like, oh, the only reason I've come to this area is to pick up this prescription. Oh, so, so frustrating. I'm not entitled to lunch breaks, obviously, but but not when it not when it's inconvenient to me. <laughs> <laughs> not when you're arriving to get your Not when I'm arriving. Don't they know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And I, I, I do get it, because in your head you go, well, you could have just served me, and then, but where do you where do you draw the line? You can't well, just serve me, because then you've just got to serve the person who's coming in just behind me, and then you never get your lunch break. So I know that absolutely they were in their right to do it. Yeah. It was so frustrating. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yes. Yes, I could have so, sworn when I got to the delivery office and they were cl closed five minutes late, I was. But never however, mind. I would still rather be served by a person who was shutting the door in my face and having a lunch break than have the world go over to robots, which look at that neat segue. <laughs> Again. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful joy. Nobody will even see the edges. <laughs> Today's discussion piece is along the lines of is the world becoming too automated, isn't it? You know, do we enjoy having um, robot tills and, and all the rest of it? And and are we... Yeah. And how this do we was... feel about the cashless society? Things like that. So. Oh, this was prompted by something you posted on Facebook yesterday that I reposted on Instagram. Yeah, I shared it from somebody else that posted it. It wasn't um it wasn't out of my it wasn't an original thought of mine. <laughs> no, it was very good though, and very thought provoking. And it was along the lines of a sort of open letter to the supermarkets, wasn't it? As the Tesco's Morrison's. Yeah. Um can you par paraphrase it? I, I um, it was it was a chap saying that basically he had gone into Asda, he had been forced to use the self-service till. 
And so it's an open letter to all supermarkets that are, that are leaning towards having more and more self-service tills and less and less actual cashiers. And then as he'd um, gone to leave Asda, there was a member of staff on the door stopping everybody and checking their receipts and checking. They paid for everything. And he basically said, if you insist that I have to do the job that you are no longer paying staff to do and that I have to do it, and I'm not seeing any reduction on my groceries for doing this work for you, then the very least you could do is trust me that I have done it honestly. And if you cannot trust your customers to do it honestly, then put the cashiers back on the checkouts. Give people their jobs back, pay proper wages, and then, and then you'll know the job's done properly. And yeah, but that was the long lines of it. We don't want to be forced to serve ourselves and then mistrusted to do it honestly if if you know there's a reason that you have cashiers at checkouts is to make sure everybody pays for everything yeah you know and if you've if you've chosen to save the money on the wages by no longer employing people and having robots do it all then the very least you can do is trust your stuff to be honest trust your customers to be honest yeah if they can have someone at the door checking receipts, then they could have been checking people out at the tills, couldn't they? Well, also, the, the time it must take to have all the receipts checked, you know? Absolutely. And, you know, I think it's even more distasteful because the supermarkets, out of all businesses, the supermarkets absolutely profited from the pandemic, didn't they? I mean, they have... that They were the only shops that were open. They have been posting growing and growing and growing profits every six, three months or six months or however often they declare to shareholders. And, you know, record profits, it seems to be every time. It seems to be not a week goes past where you don't hear about either a utility company or a supermarket making more money than they've ever made before. And I think Additionally, they profited by all the small businesses that actually were driven under in the pandemic. All the small businesses that actually went out of business in total, uh, and, and totally, then all of that business has gone on to the big supermarkets now. Exactly. So, and, and also, they haven't been backward in coming forward in terms of slapping the price rises that, you know, onto the end user, i.e. the consumer, have they, despite all these massive profits. Exactly. Um, so the fact that, you know, they, they are probably in the, a better position than any other type of business in this country at the moment to actually pay staff to do the jobs and pay them a decent wage and have checkout people and yet they're all going th this way and to save more money and it just it sticks in my craw a bit i loathe it i loathe the self-service checkouts i loathe the fact that the I, the, the little unexpected item in the bagging area makes <gasps> me, oh I, so I, I, I can't hear that without so feeling yeah. in a rage well, or the fact that I've bought a greetings card and you're accusing me of having not bagged it. Well, I have bagged it. It just doesn't weigh anything, you know, and, and all of that, all of that thing, all of that. And, you know, and then and then when you get the you have been chosen for a random check or then I like, bear in mind, I didn't want to like, like the chap said, I didn't want to serve myself in the first place. And now I've got to wait while the lady who's doing the job of four ladies comes over to check my stuff. And I feel like. It makes you feel like a criminal having your stuff checked. You stand there thinking, I hope I have it. even though you know you've paid for everything. You stand there thinking, I hope I have. I hope I have. <laughs> I went through a phase in Tesco's where I was, every single time I was called for a spot check, every single time, and I was like, this is almost discrimination now. <laughs> this is yeah. victimisation. <laughs> I once, I, you know when you have to weigh stuff and um, then you get a sticker out of the machine and you have to stick it onto the bag... I, I, I don't always use the plastic bags. I don't particularly like using the plastic bags. So if I can just throw it into my bag loose, I will do so. However, I don't want to put on the nasty, fruit. Yeah, I don't want to put a dirty sticker onto it. So I generally, when I'm doing my own self-checkout thing, put the stickers onto the handle of the trolley, yeah. scan them and then put them onto the handle of the trolley and then take them off after I've checked out. And one time I had a... Um, you know, random bag check, you've been selected for a check. And the woman went through the, she was going through my stuff and she found a lemon. She went, you haven't paid for this lemon. Never mind that I had three steaks in there. That She made me feel like I deliberately stole it. And I said, oh no, the stickers on the handle there, you know, I just put all the um, stickers yeah. for the loose things on the handle so I don't stick them to the actual fruit and veg. And she, they really make you feel as though you're deliberately trying to, steal this 30p lemon and then as you say every time after that for about three months i had a bag check every single time and i would just much rather be served by a proper checkout operator in the first yeah. place 
Absolutely. I would much rather put all my stuff on the conveyor belt and then pack it in my own time at the other side instead of instead of trying to do both jobs at the same time. And and yeah, it's very frustrating, I find. And and all of these jobs, these these are people that people are now out of work, you know. Yeah. All these jobs have been they call it streamlining, and what they actually mean is we'd like to make more profits, please. And I, I get that every company wants to make more profits, but what are all the people going to do when the robots do all the jobs? don't quite know it's an interesting one isn't it because yeah. it's not like the population's getting any smaller the population's growing all the time no i mean we've already taken the workforce down probably by 90 percent when you think of what the industrial age has done yeah and 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 then the the addition of computers into all of that was the, the workforce is probably minuscule it's, it must be minuscule compared to what it was you know in a factory for example or a baker, yeah. even. I think a you lot know, of jobs have changed, haven't they? I mean, there's lots more care jobs, for example, than there ever were previously. But that's it. We're all living longer and doing less. Yeah. And how long is it going to be before 50% of the population is caring for the other 50% and, and robots are doing all the actual jobs? It's, it's weird, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Yeah. So it's great change. I feel like it's a time of great change. Hmm. And not not in a good way. And another point that was made in that original letter that we were talking about at the beginning of this was um, the cashless society thing that 90% of these bloody self-checkouts don't accept cash. You have to pay by card, which is leading us sort of... Kids don't even carry cash with them anymore. I owed hmm. William a tenner and I get, went to give him £10. And I said, oh, can you send it to my bank account? I don't really do cash. Yeah, and it's and it's difficult as well. I tried to pop into a shop yesterday. Was it Sunday yesterday? Yeah. Mum said to me, could I pick up a TV book and a pint of milk on the way over? And I normally do carry cash because I'm this thing about this cashless society. Yeah. I had left my handbag at home and I'd only picked up my phone, which had my card in the back of it, without thinking. Because I wasn't, I, don't, I was going to, I don't normally spend money on, when I go to mum's, so I, I wasn't going to need any money with me. I hadn't thought about it. And so I thought, oh, well, that's okay. I've got my card. I can go in and buy. So I stopped at a cost cutter to pick up a TV book and a pint of milk. And he said it was a minimum of £5 on the card. Now, I understand, again, from his point of view as a small business, it costs him money every time somebody pays my card. So I understand why you need to spend £5, but I didn't want anything else. And so I had to leave without the things I did want. And he had to lose the sale altogether. And it's almost as like I said, we're being forced towards this cashless society, but they're still charging. Somebody's making money out of that. They're charging this little shopkeeper. Oh, absolutely, to have a card machine. His card payments that that he can't that he can't you know he's he's got to have a minimum spend of five. I didn't want anything else. I even stood there looking around thinking, should I get a jar of coffee? But but then you get into the further complexity of the jar of coffee is three pound ninety five here, and the same jar of coffee is only two pound ninety five elsewhere. Yeah. So I'm going to buy a jar of coffee that I don't really need just to increase my spend to be able to spend on the. <laughs> Yeah. And it all becomes a bit too much. Don't you? I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll just go away again. I'll just go away again. Sorry, Mum. Sorry, Mum. I'll, I'll, I'll go. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm with you on the cash thing. I always carry cash. I make a point of it. I make a point of trying to pay by cash. Not all the time, because it doesn't suit me to pay by cash all the time, but where I can. And fewer and fewer places are taking cash. Yeah. It restaurants yeah. and things as well. If I go to a restaurant, even if I pay the bill on card, I tip in cash. And I do this as a point of principle sorry yes. my brain gave up halfway through the sentence as a point of principle i tip in cash because if i am tipping it is a gift it is a gift of money that i'm giving to the person who served me because i'm happy with the service i have received if you tip by card most of it never gets to the person you're trying to give it to it goes to the company first the company shares it out between everybody allegedly now, I'm not tipping the chef. And the reason I'm not tipping the chef, despite the fact that he's cooked my food, is because he's already on a higher wage than the waitress. Yeah. That's why I'm not tipping the chef. And I'm not tipping the CEO or whatever. I'm not tipping the rest of the company. I'm just tipping this person, this person in front of me who went the extra mile, who yeah. cheered me up, who was who did, who did gave whatever, whatever reason. I'm tipping you, not the rest of the workforce. And furthermore, it's a gift, and therefore I should you should not pay tax on it. But when you tip on card, it's paid through their wages and it is taxed. And I believe that we are taxed far too much on far too many things as it is without taxing people on gifts. If we go cashless, there will never be any more tips or any tips will be taxed. Everything is just 
yeah. aimed at making a bit more offers and we pay so many taxes on so many things and already don't get our don't get our money's worth. Oh, absolutely. I just there was another point that I wanted to make just going back to the um unmanned tills, you know, the automatic checkouts, whatever you call them. Um in the talking to a checkout operator is some for some people perhaps the only bit of human interaction they get in a day. There's a lot yeah. of lonely people out there, people who live by themselves, people who don't get a lot of people to talk to or any visitors. Yeah. And it's nice for people to be able to go and just pass the time of day, a little chat about the weather or, oh, you've bought one of those. I had one of those last week. That was, not, you know, just a little bit of human interaction. It feels like that's being taken away. And that, that mm. to me is one of the saddest aspects of the whole automatic checkout thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, it takes the humanity out of the process of, of shopping for your groceries. And we've already lost a lot of that already by 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 going to supermarkets instead of high streets, you know, because you used to know the butcher and the baker yeah. and the candle store, yeah? and you would pop into the shops and, and while you were doing your grocery shopping, you would see Mrs. Smith doing hers and, and all of that's gone yeah. because we're all so busy and so rushed. And yeah, I think you're right. It's, it's, it's I don't, we're going to end up all just living in our own homes and, and only interacting through social media, through online contact, and never actually spend going outside and seeing anyone ever. And we talked last week about how how social media is, <laughs> you know, makes yeah. us all talk to each other. And it's not a positive thing in a lot of instances. I'm thinking our podcast is becoming a bit gloomy. <laughs> well, we do. <laughs> to be fair, at the end of last week, I said, um, what, what subject? We got a list of subjects that we're going to do. Yeah. And we said, what should we do next week? And we had a good one. And then we forgot about it. No, I'm not going to lie. I remembered and prepared. Carla didn't. Bless you, Caroline. You remembered and prepared. <laughs> and I completely forgot about it because my memory has just gone. My memory is, there's a black hole where my memory used to be. And I forget everything all the time. I hate myself for it because I've never been a forgetful person. I've always been a person who's, who's been, I've always been on time for things and, and I hate the way things are at the moment. I'm very much hoping that the HRT is going to help with that. Yeah. Because I just completely forgot that we had. Anyway, it was a funny subject, wasn't it? Which we're now going to do next week. So that we will be a bit less gloomy and a bit more. <laughs> a bit less negative, a bit less moaning minis next week. A bit week. more entertaining <laughs> next week. <laughs> Although people do seem to be enjoying the podcast so far. We've had a couple of questions about why why is it a podcast? Why is there no pictures? Um, and I think the idea of a podcast was Caroline's idea, but I think the idea is that you can reach a different audience, can't you, through podcasts. People will find yeah. a podcast who won't necessarily go on YouTube and things like that. Because, of course, for the YouTube viewers, it's turning up on YouTube for you guys, but other people are listening to it through other mediums who yeah. perhaps have never even seen our YouTube channels. So it was interesting. Don't want to after listening to this. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, probably not. Someone else knows very well. But yeah, I think it's to reach a different audience. And yeah. there is the benefit of the fact that I can sit here looking like I've just been dug up and it doesn't matter. That's what I looked like <laughs> last week, to be fair. <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's just something a little bit different. And podcasts are really popular, aren't they? But and you can and you don't have to sit and look at the screen. You can go out and about, and you can listen to them while you're out walking the dog, yes. or you know, whatever. So that was sort of the reason for it. I don't know if it was it's showing a... you anything that you can't see because we're because we're just sitting here chatting away, basically. Yes, and it's sort of um, doing you know just chatting to each other, which is quite nice because YouTube is a very solitary thing, and it's a way to sit and chat to each other. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think a couple of people were perplexed by it, you know, kind of. And and one lady said, uh, "Why, why a podcast?" And I said, "Do you mean why? Why is it called a podcast, or why did we choose to do one?" And she said, "Why is it called a podcast?" And I didn't know. I said, "I don't know. I have no idea." It was to do with the, it was. Let me get this right. I think they were originally called podcasts. It was a an amalgamation of the word iPod, as in the music player, and. Mm -hmm. um, audio casting i think oh. apparently didn't mean an awful i did look it up after that lady asked because i was interested but every day is a school day if Indeed, it is. Background, my stomach's just on the biggest rumble i've ever heard <laughs> <laughs> it's not the weather that's my stomach <laughs> i guess we better wrap up for this week because we've only got three minutes left i think so and i've got to go and do a tip run hurrah for that 
Oh, it's all the glamour in your life this week, isn't oh, it? Oh, it's honestly, it's um, one one day it's the red carpet. I don't know which day because I'm not there hasn't come yet. But you know, the next day it's the one. <laughs> Have a good week and go, go and get something to eat. For God's sake, you're starving yourself. Apparently so. Yeah, you can't you can't tell from looking at me, but apparently, yeah, apparently I'm having it. <laughs> Thank you all very much for listening again, and um, we need to get some social media sorted out so people can actually reply to us because the podcast listeners can't reply or yeah. leave comments so we need to get an instagram account or something so yeah. anybody can anyway yes perhaps we'll do that i'm just rambling now thank you very much for listening we'll see you again next week bye bye <laughs>